wonderful people. How are you doing? How have you been? Are you still watching? Are you still subscribing? Today I'm in Rongai chilling with some beautiful, beautiful, awesome people. And Kama Kawaida, I'll let them introduce later after I introduce myself. I'm your girl, Linda Kenyita. And this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. We meet dog lovers. We meet different breeds of dogs. And today... I'm going to chat about these guys. They are first-time dog owners. People, for the first time, you're meeting first-time dog owners. And they're going to tell me why, how they started, how the journey is so far. So let's go to them. Let's get to learn more. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, let's go. My people, how are you? Fine. Introduce yourself. Hello, mm -hmm. I'm Penny. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, an owner of Green Garden Kennels. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello, I'm uh, Mugo Karaba, and I'm also uh, the co owner for Green Garden Kennels. And we are both uh, dog lovers. Yeah. So, both dog lovers. Uh, now, let me ask this question. Mm, yeah, you are a couple, right? Okay, this is nice because I've been meeting people who are like, um, mm, they love dogs, mm, others don't love dogs. Mm. But we are trying to g get somewhere katikati, so at least today, it's a, it's, it's a balance. So welcome. Mm -hmm. So this is our kennels, mm -hmm. and you can see the first thing when you enter is uh, the deep. You have a deep here. Mm -hmm. uh, you put some types of products that when people walk, mm -hmm. it actually uh, sanitizes the, the things. So that especially people who visit dogs, mm -hmm. they, vis they, are, they go to many different types of dogs. They have different bacteria and everything, which can now actually contaminate your dogs and everything. So mm -hmm. we like having a deep here. Mm -hmm. At least it leaves everything behind. Mm -hmm. So that, this is the first part. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm here meeting the dogs and I'm going to be introduced to the dogs. So we can start with uh, Kalisi. This is her kennel. She shares with uh, Maya. Actually, those two, uh, Maya is the only other dog, the GSD, who can share a kennel with Kalisi. Kalisi is a very sweet dog and everything, but she has very high um, territorial instincts. So yeah, with her best friend, she's okay, but... Uh, mm. Maya, come here. So now this is Maya. She's extremely sweet. She's a long coat uh, GSD. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, this is uh, Kalisi. Now, now it's a bit hot. It's midday, so the, she's sleeping. She's laying down. She likes the cool, uh, the cool surface on the floor. Mm. Well, maybe we can go to the others. So now here we have our newest member. Uh, we called her Chloe. She's a uh, Bobel. She's two months and uh, three weeks right now. She's very, she's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, here is uh, Sh Shadow. She's uh, she's also she's a solid black GSD. Also, she's sweet. She's noisy, but she's also very nice. Yeah. Uh, and we can come to this big guy here. Here is our Bobel. This one is uh, he's called Keanu. He was our first dog. And uh, he's currently 11 months. He's our oldest dog. All the others are puppies. Him, he's the oldest. Uh, he's, he, might, he might look fierce, but he's, he's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> you might not come out of the house if he's here and he doesn't know you, but he, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's very good, yeah. Okay. And of course, we have our Milo here. He's a golden retriever. Yeah. He's extremely, extremely playful. Like now, you can see what he's trying to do. He wants you to throw. He always wants to play and throw things. We could even open. He's just he, the energy he has all the time. He's always extremely playful. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was in uh, October first year. Uh, this is one of our kennels. Uh, you can just enter. So this is the feeding place. You always need a raised place because um, when they feed when they are bending, it can cause bloating and it even leads to death of dogs sometimes. So you need a raised surface. And here behind is their sleeping area. We normally have blankets and beddings to keep them warm. Um, but most of our dogs are long coats and they prefer the cold. So yeah, there's a blanket at night, and um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a drainage system, yeah. 
As you can see, we have empty kennels needing dogs for boarding. So you're all welcome to come and board your dogs. They'll have a comfortable, clean, warm environment. And when they're feeling so hot, they have a run here where they, there's fresh air and sun in case they need to bask. Uh, yeah. There's also another kennel. Yeah. Mostly for small, yeah, it's smaller for smaller breeds. Yeah, still with the raised, all kennels have raised things for feeding bowls and water bowls. You always have to keep them having fresh water. So now, how, for how long have you been owning dogs? When did you acquire your first dog? So we got our first dog this year, January 2021. Yeah, a South African Bobel, Kianu. Yeah, so we are first time dog owners and by November now we have seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me laugh and then I'll come back to that. So why a Bobel as a first time dog? Wow, uh, Bobel, actually we did not want a Bobel when we started. Uh, when we started we wanted a Samoyed and we looked all over to see uh, where we can find a Samoyed and we just realized in Kenya they don't have Samoyed. So we went to different uh, breeders mm -hmm. And uh, with the one of our friends, he was called Cleophas. He's the one who helps us uh, find all those guys. And then we found uh, Bobels, mm -hmm. and we are like, "Wow, what is this amazing, amazing creature?" He, he, when the puppies came out, mm -hmm. uh, they were so majestic, so buff, so. So I think we just fell in love with them immediately. Like when we saw Kianu, mm -hmm. we already knew we are not leaving that dog, mm -hmm. and we did not leave him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And now. How, how, how did you move now from that one dog to seven dogs? Mm -hmm. So we, we were first time dog owners, so you always have to do research. And the people we were getting dogs from uh, were so friendly and they kept saying, come visit, we'll show you how to take care of them, we'll show you other dogs, how to keep the dogs. So we were going from one person to another. Um, so where we got the ball bell, um, the guy, there was a vet there who was taking, when we went for a raid, we found the vet there. The vet is also a trainer. So he told us, yeah, he told us to go visit, see, he, he also has kennels, see, and he'll also teach us as first time dog owners how to take care of them. So we went, we enrolled Keanu also for some training, and when he was there, he, will, he was always brought for dogs to train or puppies. Mm -hmm. So when we were there one day for a training session, we saw two golden retrievers. Mm -hmm. And that was also one of our, f before, we, w we always wanted Samoyeds or a Golden Retriever. When we saw it in that training session, mm -hmm. we didn't have the money, but we had to live with one. <laughs> 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 I think I can understand that feeling because every time I visit uh, a kennel, I end up making friends, dog buddies, and I feel bad going home without one. So I would understand that. So currently, what are the breeds that you're having? Uh, currently, we have so the South African Bobel, we have a Golden Retriever, we have uh, two GSDs, one solid black and uh, one uh, black and tan. Uh, we have uh, another Bobel, actually, we, co we got it uh, recently, four days ago, yeah. And we have uh, Spitz, which is also mixed with the uh, GSD. <laughs> I think I didn't for Oh, yeah, we have a Caucasian also. A Caucasian <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> yeah, I can't, how can I forget Kalis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, your kennel is very beautiful. Uh, uh, what, what inspired the setup? Oh, the setup, actually, when we were researching for kennels, mm -hmm. uh, we went on Pinterest, actually, and we saw a very beautiful kennel which had a run in front of it mm -hmm. and a sleeping place inside, and we said, Bas, we have to find a way mm -hmm. we are going to do this. It's actually the American style. Mm -hmm. So when we saw that, we... we put some people together and we told them now how can we make this and now with that team of people that's when now we actually managed to uh, to get the results we got so we are very happy about it mm. um as uh, first time dog owners so far the few months that you've owned dogs what are the challenges that you've gone through or have you met any kind of challenges when it comes to owning the dogs and keeping dogs well yeah uh, challenges we got so many let's start with the first challenge when we got Keanu our first dog wow three days after we got him 
he, we had to hospitalize him. Uh, he started having bloody diarrhea, he was puking, he was losing weight. We were wondering what's happening. Did we get a dog which is not uh, healthy or what's up? So yeah, the first challenge we got basically was that uh, we didn't know. We had uh, low um, knowledge about it and we changed the foods and such things. And that's so dangerous actually when you get a puppy, mm -hmm. they have a weak uh, system. So you have to actually uh, try and uh, keep the diet that the puppy had from uh, wh where it came from. Mm -hmm. So that was the first challenge. The health challenge, specifically for Keanu, he, he had so many. We hospitalized, we hospitalized him at uh, how is it called? Uh, small five. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, he started limping, which was now the growing pain because he's a bobel. He's growing exponentially fast, so his bones basically are not following. Mm -hmm. So now we had to. Now we learned that we just have to supplement him with extra calcium, extra uh, vitamins, and everything. Mm -hmm. So now that's on health. We've had so many, and that's just health. Then when it came to, came to construction, oh, <laughs> construction. I think even Penny can tell you better because we were so so stressed. Penny. Oh. <laughs> what happened with construction? Well, I wasn't here most of the time. It was Mugo dealing with it, but um, the people who are dealing with the construction, um, we showed them the picture of what we wanted and told them, um, but they like played us because afterwards, in like a week, the floors were cracking, the walls, we were told um, they... Full of sand yeah, well. water was seeping, so we were told they used low quality things and did a work in a hurry. Mm. And maybe they didn't take it so seriously because it's a dog house, maybe. And so we got so many challenges, and we had to call someone else now to rectify, which made the cost go from like what was supposed to be to like that triple. Double, yeah. yeah, but thankfully, we've lost, uh, we've corrected everything and now the kennels are fully functional mm -hmm. now let me go back to that love dog love that dog love did you, did you like first time when in terms of first time dog owners you've never ever even when you were kids you've never had dogs and if you never had what inspired you to get a dog now uh, actually, I mean, when I was a kid myself, that's not the same for Penny, but for me, we, I always loved dogs, especially when I was a kid. Uh, we used to uh, go outside, you see the stray puppies and everything, we'd try to rear them. So we always had many strays around us and we played with them. We, were even try we even taught some to chase. So, so we were very, uh, I've always loved dogs. And actually, now, that was back in Djibouti. When we were in Kenya, we had, uh, my parents in their house have also have always been having dogs. So for me, it came naturally. I, I love, I have always loved, loved dogs. But now for all this uh, endeavor or <laughs> all this adventure, actually, it wasn't my, my idea. It was actually Penny's. Penny was like, uh, we are looking for a dog, so let's just get one. And I was always like, no, we can't afford, we can't afford. And you know, that's the thing. When someone talks about dogs, you always think it is so expensive. You need, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands to be able to take care. And actually, it's not true. All you need to do is start with your first one mm -hmm. and then it just continues and you see how it has gone. We took our first one, then we saw a second one, we took it. We saw a third and fourth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we took we also took it. Like it's literally an addiction. Every time we go to visit to, to see dogs and we're like, Oh, we are just coming to visit. <laughs> ah, okay. Well we come back with the dog. <laughs> so so recently we actually three days ago we went to visit uh Bobels and uh, we came back with another dog. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's us now. Yeah, but uh, truly, yeah, it, it was actually Penny who uh, who had the idea of bring dogs. I was against it, but she talked me into it uh, slowly by slowly by showing me videos, YouTube videos of Pomeranians, of Samoyeds, of so much. Uh, for a whole year, she was always, 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 always on me until the point I was like, you know what? Let's go look for one. <laughs> and that's how it started now. Penny. Yeah. Uh, th this love of dog for a whole year, you you kind of I, I don't say pressuring. I will say. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how did that start? Have you always loved dogs? Have you owned a dog before? Like, so I've never had dogs. I've actually I was always scared of dogs because I've been chased severally. 
So even there are dogs at home, mm -hmm. I can't come out when they are there. Till now, mm -hmm. I have dogs, but I still fear their dogs. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for ways to get over my fear. Mm -hmm. I saw one Instagram, funny videos of dogs. Mm -hmm. You see them on YouTube. Then I started getting interested. Mm -hmm. Dogs, are they don't always chase people. Mm -hmm. People can live with them. Mm -hmm. So I started checking, mm, if I had a dog, what would I want? And I learned about the breeds mm -hmm. through YouTube videos like yours also. Mm -hmm. So, um, and eventually I got interested. I knew about the breeds, their temperaments, and I decided, um, Mugo had a friend who had dogs. Yeah, so he told us, um, you don't have to buy a dog. You can just come and go visit and see. People are always happy to show their dogs. But when you visit them, you come back with dogs. <laughs> yeah, so from a fear, I got my own, and even after I got mine, it took like a month before I could. I always used to run away from yeah, Kiani. Away from Kiani yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it's so. If you fear dogs, mm -hmm. slowly by slowly, just get one, and you'll get over the fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, which other breeds? The next time I visit you guys, which other breeds are you looking towards uh, giving a home? Wow, uh, we want all breeds. That's the full truth. We want all types of breeds. But uh, the next ones we are planning to get. Recently we got a female bobel, but the next one we want a, a, a full spit, like the nice white ones. Then you love the small dogs. And I actually started li loving them too. Then we also we also currently one which is coming uh, very soon is the solid black uh, German Shepherd, a male also. And then after those ones have come, we want also another golden retriever. And then we now we want to go to uh, Dobermans. I've always personally loved Dobermans. Mm -hmm. They're like so majestic. They're so fierce and everything. I love big dogs. I just love them. Mm -hmm. I also want a Kango, mm -hmm. which is another type of humongous dog. I think they even become bigger than uh, Caucasians. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, let me just say all breeds. <laughs> we, want, yeah. we literally want all breeds. Uh, mm. Oh, Chow Chow, yes. How can oh. I forget? Yeah, yeah like Zoe. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Now. Big dogs, several big dogs. How is it when it comes to feeding? Have you come across any feeding? Are you well prepared on where you're going to get the meals? Or how has been the journey? Oh, feeding, it has been uh, a learning process. A learning process because uh, each dog is actually very uh, specific. Like when we get a dog from somewhere, uh, they all have their own types of diet. Some of them are on uh, rice and minced meat, others are on beef, others. So in the beginning, it was super hard. Like uh, we said, the challenges we got with Keanu when we changed his diet so quickly. So we progressively, we learned that, uh, you know what, what, we just be changing the diet, but slowly, because you can't have have like 10 diets for 10 different dogs that's yeah. it becomes impossible there's no no one no one can do that uh, or maybe people can do that but it's challenging so what we dis we did is that uh, we changed their diet slowly to all of them having the same thing mm -hmm. so right now currently we feed them on dry food pellets mm -hmm. and at night we boil uh, rice and uh, minced chicken mm -hmm. and now to feed them because some of them are very sociable together when eating others are not like Kalisi Kalisi is the mo one of our um, sweetest dogs you never never know she can fight you never know anything mm -hmm. but when food comes mm -hmm. if anyone <laughs> tries to come close to her boss she will fight. you'll actually see the strength of a Caucasian mm -hmm. when the food comes for her so what we do to avoid all fights and all um, unnecessary stress we just put them each in one kennel mm -hmm. and then now we feed them from there and it's actually very easy because the they're well let's say educated they won't fight for the food they won't jump on us mm -hmm. they're very good actually yeah so yeah. Now, that, that brings me to my next question. You have different breeds in the kennel. You brought them in at d different intervals. You didn't acquire them all together. How are they relating? Do, do we have one dog hitting another? Do, have we had a dog fight so far? Um, not really. Um, we were taught how to... Our trainer was very nice. He taught us how to dog introduction and socialization. So what you normally do, you hold your dog um, out of its territory. Like, um, suppose you've come with a new dog, we'll bring it outside here, because the kennel or inside the house. So it will be on a leash, and the new dog will be let free. The, new do uh, the older dog will sniff it, and most of the time their hair rises. So it takes like a minute or two 
they sniff each other, do what they need to do. When the hair goes down, you can release the dog. Yeah, so, yeah, so you shouldn't stop the dog. Mm -hmm. You should let them sniff mm -hmm. while on a leash in case it tries to bite. But all of ours, it takes a minute. They are socialized, mm -hmm. so it normally is you introduce one by one by one. It can't be all a gang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside of its territory, on a leash, the one which is new, free. Mm -hmm not to feel restricted mm -hmm. and then when they know each other you let them run around okay. so yeah for introducing as uh, Penny said uh, we leave them with like there's some a mistake uh, people do some sometimes they restrict it so much but you're not supposed you're literally just supposed to look at your dog mm -hmm. see how he reacts and then they're going to basically become friends like that mm -hmm. And uh, something else we like inside the house because, as she said, if you are inside the the kennels of that territory, but inside the house they know it's our place, mm -hmm. and also that um, knowledge how we taught them, it makes it so much easier. Recently we got a, we say we got a small bobel. It took five minutes. Mm -hmm. In five minutes, mm -hmm. per dog, they were they literally all became friends and you could actually even li leave her outside with all the gang mm -hmm. and they were very playful they were just very happy there so yeah mm -hmm. mm. and that's actually yeah really think as she said the trainer he's called steve by the way i don't know if we've uh, mentioned his name he was very good in uh training our dog kianu first of all and then training us on how to now deal with uh, each uh, each dogs yeah mm. Mm. now who does the grooming for the dogs <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do I do the washing, the combing, and uh, on occasion I also do some blow drying. Mm -hmm. But because we don't have the exact the proper machine right now, we are using the hair blow dry. We don't really use it too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we like I like room uh, washing them. Like like today it's a very sunny day. Mm -hmm. This is the best time. They actually yes, they actually like it when uh, they have some cool water on them, and they are, you wash them at a time like this. They're very happy. Yeah. Mm. So who are we cleaning today? Uh, today we can uh, clean uh, Milo. We, we actually watched them recently, but uh, Milo likes digging. He likes making himself dirty. So I think he would be a good candidate uh, to, <laughs> to wash. And yeah. Okay. Mm. You mentioned digging. Now in your kennel design, there is the play playground. Let me call it the playground that has grass. Tell me, tell me about that. Oh my God, our grass. Our, our, gr our grass is a. Um, it's a project, let me just say, a very hard project because the dogs, mm -hmm. when you have grass and you have dogs, basically the, the grass is a loser. <laughs> they have been digging all over that grass, putting patches here, there, there. There's a place, a small like a four meter square, they dug like over 15 holes there. And every time we're always covering, covering, but then the grass dies and then they also pee all over. So the ammonia in that thing just dries the grass. So the grass has been a headache. Like when you talk about challenges, that's something else. Our grass has been a headache, uh, the biggest headache I can see. And it's not because of water, it's not because of dryness, it's just because of the dogs and their digging. They love it. <laughs> we are even thinking maybe we put sand, uh, like we make a bucket of sand or whatever in the ground. That way they'll be concentrating in digging there and peeing there and then they leave the grass around <laughs> yeah yeah now when it comes to the health of your dogs other than now you explained for the bobel puppy very well but by the time you're raising them d did you come across any other health challenges um yeah uh, we got one with a skin reaction and we visited several vets wondering what it was. They thought it was mites, they thought it was fleas, uh, but later we found out it was just a fungal infection and, and we were advised on the shampoo to use to clear it. But we really went round because the, there were like pimples and even blood was coming out. And yeah, we couldn't find, but finally we found it was just a fungal infection and there's a special shampoo to use. Okay. Now you mentioned pests, t fleas, uh, is that a challenge that you've come across? I uh, know you're in Rongai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, when it comes to pests, that fleas, mites, uh, ticks, that's a huge, especially that's now where we are, just behind the chicken. So you must know there's so many fleas on that side. So we've had quite a number of uh, infestations. And uh, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning we were so new, we really didn't know. We were just using some products here and there, but we didn't know that when you have that amount of uh, fleas and whatever, 
the only thing you can actually, the real thing is just block where those things are coming from because even if you treat them, they come back. You treat, they come back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the beginning, it was a huge challenge. And uh, actually even how we solved it is by actually putting a full barrier and we cemented even the down. And that way now there was no more transmissions of uh, between mites and whatever from those chickens to here, mm -hmm. that's completely stopped. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, uh, we gave them some uh, flea controls. There are a couple in the market right now. There are so many we've tried mm -hmm. and we see most of them actually work. It's just that uh, when you have fewer, like now we, now we have none mm -hmm. and it's a very controlled area we have right now. So it's, we, we are not even using any flea control right now, are we? Mm -hmm. No, no, we are not. We, we, f we finished our previous one mm -hmm. and we didn't even actually see a need uh, of uh, continuing. Yeah. So yeah, so I'd say the best thing is just to restrain where they're where coming, they're from, they're yeah. coming from. Yeah, the hygiene. Because, and also now that uh, the, when we talk of hygiene, mm -hmm. We clean these kennels every day, like uh, we wash them a bit of jig and soap and we wash the walls and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it also makes it uh, much easier and much cheaper because uh, jig and soap is so cheap. <laughs> The, the flea controls are so expensive. Oh my goodness, they're, they're, the most, they're even more expensive than the dog's vaccines. So you just, a bit of jig, a bit of soap, you wash everything, bus. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You've been acquiring uh, dogs when they're puppies. What are the things you look for when now saying like, no, this is the puppy I want. What are the things that you're looking for? So first of all, you always have to go to the location. Don't rely on the pictures. There are a lot of con artists out there. So you, ha you have to see the mother and the father also to know how the dog will look, uh, the genetics. Then you always uh, have to make sure the dog has been vaccinated and the vaccination card has a stamp from the vet. And um, yeah, you always have to make sure the dog is vaccinated. All our dogs are fully vaccinated virus, DHLP and rabies, they are fully vaccinated. And you also have to be very careful with your vaccination cards because recently we took a dog for training and the trainer needed the vaccination card in case there is an accident, show the dog is fully vaccinated against rabies. And unfortunately we lost our vaccination card, so that's another road to recovering uh, vaccination cards. So yeah, always give copies not the original. We are first dog owners and we've made many mistakes, but we are learning. Yeah. <laughs> no, when it comes to saying you've made many mistakes, what are some of those mistakes that you've made? Uh, we, are, we, we are very trustful. We were, let's, we were very trustful. Uh, one of the, in the beginning when we started, I said we were looking for some weird. And uh, we, the guy who wanted to sell us a Samoyed was like, oh, you know, I have one. And he was all the way to Vika. So Vika from uh, Rongai, it's a huge distance. So we are like, you know what, let's come. So we went all the distance just to find out that he was just a con man and he didn't even pick up the phone. So yeah, we, we are very trustworthy. And that was, I feel it's a mistake because the fuel we used <laughs> for just... <sighs> But, but, but I'm thinking you are lucky you didn't decide, uh, yeah, let me send you the deposit and then get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then he wanted, he wanted the 1,000 deposit so that we can go visit. And I was like, why, why are we depositing? Mm -hmm. we, we almost did by then, but I was like, you know what, mm -hmm. let's just go. It's a long distance, mm -hmm. but... Uh, if we get the dog, we'll be happy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is that. So we that we didn't do the mistake. So yeah. Now, when it comes to socializing with your dogs, which activities do you hold with your dogs? How how are you ensuring that you're getting you and dog time? Like you're balancing it. Um, okay, those are. I think there are two things. When it comes to socializing by itself. Uh, like uh, what we were saying before, we walk our dogs. Uh, the good thing in walks is that they get uh, familiarized with the outside, with cars passing, other people passing, other animals and everything. And you also get to see their attitude. Some of the dogs uh, would want to lunch on the cars. Other dogs are very friendly. They'll just be okay. They'll just walk and ignore. So that's the part uh, when you're socializing. It's actually even walks in general is socializing, by the way. And uh, it's a whole exercise. And you really have to be keen and do it in a very uh, sometimes strict for the dogs which lunch towards cars you have to be very strict to stop that behaviors mm -hmm. and sometimes it's very free and it's uh, they usually love it so dogs love to be walked so much so that's one of the things another thing we're doing for socializing yeah, especially for Keanu and the dogs which are very okay with uh, cars rides and that or whatever 
um, we would uh, bring the dog to maybe a, a mall. We would bring the dog maybe to a mall or something. Uh, there's, there are a few malls which are good for for dogs, which they allow dogs. Yeah. So now we bring them around there. They meet people, such things. Such things are actually very good to make sure that your dog doesn't uh, lunge on people. And that's why actually all of our dogs right now, uh, they don't, except the one we've uh, had trained, which I wouldn't really try to introduce to people. Mm -hmm. Though the others are very friendly. Like you could even release all of them and they would, they would just be very happy and jump on you. So yeah. And also we've met very nice dog lovers who have kennels and other dogs and they always invite us to visit them. And there the dog meets new people children and new breeds of dogs so we keep on socializing them visiting other people um, with dogs and that helps and also whenever there are family functions we carry our dogs <laughs> <laughs> are you are that couple <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now you've mentioned that you've met new friends and dog lovers. How has owning dogs influenced or changed your lives for the last couple of months that since you acquired your first puppy? Well, I can say the one thing it has changed mm -hmm. is that I wake up every day at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I go to sleep at 8. That never happened before. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very big sleeper and I usually would sleep the whole day and everything. So I can say when it comes to uh, personal responsibility, I think I've, I have grown a bit and it has given me some types of values. Like I know uh, once 4 a.m. reaches, I know I have to bring the dogs out. I have to feed them. I have to uh, clear the, ca the cages. I have to do, and all those, that type of mindset, mm -hmm. I didn't have it before. Like uh, I was a very relaxed person. Uh, I would go and play games. I, I'm a gamer actually. <laughs> and all those things, I would game until very late at night. That doesn't happen any anymore. So I can say the first thing it changed is my habits. You have to, it's no longer what you want to do, is what you have to schedule your life around the dog's need. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the biggest thing it has changed, yeah. Mm. Penny? Um, it has made me very responsible mm -hmm. in that uh, when I come home from work, mm -hmm. even if I don't feel like I should go for a walk, mm -hmm. and that helps in exercise mm -hmm. and also helping your mind be at peaceful. When you are uh, from work with stress, when you come, you see your dog, you go for a walk, have a nice time. Uh, it helps in mental wellness mm -hmm. and also it has made me be... What can I say? I used to, I can be, I'm a very quiet person. I can be pushed around easily. And the dogs noticed that. Uh, Mugo would tell them something, they do it immediately. When I tell them, it's <laughs> just a joke. So I've learned to be, you have to be the alpha of the pack. Or they won't listen to you, you'll be beneath them. Mm -hmm. So it has made me learn to be more, uh, is it assertive? Yeah, you have to be in charge of the dog. Hey, friends, are there any friends who have stayed away because now you're having too many dogs? Ah, no, actually we've, we were very antisocial people before, <laughs> but with dogs... <laughs> Gamer, quiet, <antisocial>. Yeah, <laughs> but with dogs so many people reach out, they want to come visit, um, and yeah, even dog lovers come with their dogs to visit. You have to take your dogs to the festivals where you met me. Hey, yeah, but yes, but that's even how we came to meet uh, Dog TV at uh, Doctoberfest. So yeah, it's one of the like like Penny was saying, we were so antisocial at first, and now with such festivals, people coming, we've had a lot. We've had a lot of uh, interaction and a lot of fun. A lot of fun, yeah. Mm. Um, we are very humble because when learning about dog breeds or what, one of the channels watch is dog tv yeah. we watch other people being interviewed and now it's us we are very <laughs> humbled <laughs> and you guys you guys you've been lovely this is one episode that i'm looking forward to because you guys have been awesome what are we going to be doing here what is this so here is actually our grooming station now mm -hmm. so what we're going to do now we're mm -hmm. going to show you how we uh, wash uh, this guy here mm -hmm. He's been digging and it's actually very dirty. You can see it so far because it's been a chair, but it is very, very dirty. Mm -hmm. So you want to just uh, wash him nicely. Uh, just for you guys to see how now how now we do things. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Let's wash you, my love. Good boy. Good. Good boy. I can remove this. He doesn't need it anymore. 
So in the future, we want to put a, a metal bar here, mm -hmm. so that uh, because some dogs sometimes they get afraid and they want mm -hmm. to jump out. Mm -hmm. So in the future, we will put a metal bar. Mm -hmm. But for now, especially for such good dogs here, mm -hmm. they don't need it. Ah. So this one is very, it's actually very good to wash. He, he likes water. Mm -hmm. So first thing, we always rinse properly everywhere. Mm -hmm. Him, he, he likes sitting down a lot. Sometimes mm -hmm. it makes it harder, but still okay. Good boy. And the way I used to, to fight with my dogs when I was young to wash them. <laughs> oh, lo, lo, uh, lo, when dogs. dogs are not introduced, we've introduced this, our dogs mm -hmm. to being washed since they were small puppies. Mm -hmm. So they're very easy. So now, if actually we are washing someone else's dog, mm -hmm. we should take a, a few precautions like um, a muzzle mm -hmm. and uh, also attaching the dog to a metal bar, the way I was saying, mm -hmm. the, with a leash so that mm -hmm. the dog doesn't try to run away. No. But and now in the cases of ours, mm -hmm. they're just, they've been introduced when they were very small puppies, so mm -hmm. it's actually very easy. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's enough water. Uh, now I put for him the soap. Stay. Don't go. So this is an anti free soap. Mm -hmm. It's actually very good and it smells very nice. I really like it. Mm -hmm. And also the second thing we'll put after this mm -hmm. will be conditioner. Mm -hmm. So I like using those too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Your name is really. Can like I? Can I help? <laughs> Yeah, you can. You can. You want to do it? Yes. Let me even add a bit more water. There you can. Go, go ahead. He's, he's very... Okay. Okay. Good boy. Good. Mm, this smells nice. Mm. It also gives them a type of massage. And they like that, especially him on the head. Mm -hmm. If you do it nice on the head, he really relaxes and loves it. Mm. So you, you just try with many different dogs, you see what they like. Mm -hmm. And once you've seen that spot that they really love, it becomes much, much, much easier to even wash them. Mm. Mm. Okay, doggy. People, I'm washing a dog. <laughs> and it feels nice. So for those of you asking me, do they smell? <laughs> no! This is why they do not smell. This is why I'm comfortable when I go around places and dogs are hugging me and licking me because I trust that people are taking care of their dogs. Are you taking care of your dog? When was the last time you washed your dog? How do you, how do you take care of the paws? The pose, the same way you're doing, you basically just take one leg. This one is very cooperative. Melo sit. You just have him to sit first, for example, the front. And then you give him leg. Come on, give me. Good boy. And that way, mm -hmm. you can just individually wash it, each mm -hmm. pod. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. And you see when he's licking, mm -hmm. it's not like he wants to lick, he's just a bit afraid sometimes when he doesn't know. Mm. So that's like his uh, affection way of mm. saying, please mm. be gentle. Uh, mm. The pods are very sensitive. That's why even before mm. we wash, give, I... Give leg. My low. Oh, oh Give the other leg. Give. Good. Good. Good boy. Him, he loves water. He's a very nice guy. Mm. Mm. The, the, uh, what about the heel? So now for behind, mm. how you do it, mm -hmm. first you need to bring the dog a bit closer. Milo, come. Come on. Come on. Good boy. And then, mm -hmm. this is the technique. Mm -hmm. Okay, now maybe he wants to go up by himself, but mm -hmm. you're supposed to take him from his down part and put him up there. So. Mm -hmm. Now once he's up, mm -hmm. now he's sliding, mm -hmm. you can take a leg behind mm -hmm. and then now you can wash the leg. That's oh, from behind. Yes. Okay. Some dogs really are serial sitters mm -hmm. and it makes it much, much harder. So you actually, from, uh, it's a bit weird, but let's, let me just say, you have to take them a bit from their genitals and it gives them a reflex to stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't feel pain, mm -hmm. but uh, they feel there's something touching their private parts so they have to they have to stand up. Other one, give me my love. I help it. I also like washing the face, avoiding the eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think from the front he's very good now. Mm -hmm. Only the now the behind part. Maybe I do that one. Yeah. Uh, and there is something else, maybe 
I may do that first or later on is the ears. Mm -hmm. Usually you don't want this soap to enter the ears. So you mm -hmm. usually you wash the hair which is here mm -hmm. with the soap mm -hmm. and carefully but you don't let the soap enter inside. Mm -hmm. So once you rinse him, mm -hmm. now that's what I do after I've rinsed him, mm -hmm. I'm going to use like a cloth like this one with mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. to remove the thing in the ear. And sometimes when they're very dirty, mm -hmm. what, what's good to do is to take alcohol, mm -hmm. put it in a, like, like spirit, mm -hmm. put it on a cloth like this one mm -hmm. and now wipe inside. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you that just in a minute. Let me just finish his behind. His behind is also one of the most important things here because mm -hmm. that's where they poop and mm -hmm. you don't want anything to be left. Like uh, sometimes you have like a poop or something which is left here behind mm -hmm. and you, you must take make sure you take the, your time here so that all this particles and everything come out. Okay. So there's something else also we like doing mm -hmm. is conditioner mm -hmm. but uh, this guy mm -hmm. we, gi we gave him conditioner well, when was it a few days ago mm -hmm. but uh, the good thing with the conditioner what it does specifically why you even like it mm -hmm. is because uh, when they're shedding or anything mm -hmm. it really removes all the, the hair and everything mm -hmm. and then for the afterwards when they're drying and when they fully dry they mm -hmm. become even much much softer mm -hmm. so i can show you that uh, quickly after this but first i want to remove all this uh, all this soap hey lord and i need to do your head mm -hmm. and this is something dogs don't mm -hmm. like we're rinsing rinsing uh, their he their heads and uh, but again we have a very compliant dog here he will be okay with that so this is how i do it i usually try to protect the nose and mm -hmm. rinse the face then i protect the ears mm -hmm. so that water doesn't enter inside mm -hmm. it's not good to have uh, dirty water and soap enter the ears it can give them some types of infections this one mm -hmm. milo mm -hmm. you're making me do error you can just show the toe brush and mm -hmm. maybe yeah that's what i wanted oh. that was yeah. Mm -hmm. I've put it there and then I'll click. Okay. I'll do so that. When it comes to the teeth, mm -hmm. how how do you deal with it? The teeth. We have two things for the teeth. Yeah. The first thing mm -hmm. I, I can't bring is uh, oh, okay. uh, the, the first thing is uh, we there are those very big bones. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called they the femur or for goats, not goats, mm -hmm. I mean cows or pigs, mm -hmm. they have very, very huge bones, we give them. Mm -hmm. And because they can't have the, the bone fully in their mouth, mm -hmm. it actually brushes their teeth when they're trying to get the meat and stuff, stuff from the side. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one. Mm -hmm. And it's the one actually most people should be using. It's mm -hmm. The dogs love them mm -hmm. and it's a good treat also, also for them. We have some here in, in our freezer. Mm -hmm. Now the second way we also, we also do for their teeth, mm -hmm. we have a toothbrush here. Mm -hmm. We actually brush their teeth completely. Whoa! We can actually brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. We usually don't do it because they are relatively clean mm -hmm. for our dogs. Mm -hmm. And we usually use those bones techniques and everything. Mm -hmm. But I can show you very quickly here. Mm -hmm. And Milo is in a very good mood, so I can show you that. It looks very weird, but yeah. And the good thing with these types mm -hmm. of dog toothpaste mm -hmm. is that they, have, uh, they can actually swallow them. They're, mm -hmm. not, uh, they're not toxic for them. So you really try to get fast the front mm -hmm. and, trying not, and trying not to hurt his gum. You see right now, <laughs> he's not happy at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like now that's, this is what you expect dogs to do. They want to fight this. Mm -hmm. They really want to... Uh, to fight to fight this so much but mm -hmm. it's two good ones in a while together it removes the tarts deeply in their teeth which is very good come on milo good boy so if i really want to start brushing you start early yes you start yeah. very very early mm -hmm. like this one we started a bit late mm -hmm. all of them we started late because even us uh, as new dog owners mm -hmm. we didn't know about uh, brushing the teeth we knew about the other techniques mm -hmm. but we didn't know about uh, the tooth brushing itself now once he's fully uh, rinsed from the soap, I actually remove them. Mm -hmm. I don't like having them walk down, so I usually remove them from here, mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> then from here, if I release him, he'll go running and doing that. <laughs> and so before he goes running and pours water on everyone, mm -hmm. I first drop him. But the good thing is, you see, a day like today, mm -hmm. if I didn't use a towel, mm -hmm. he would still dry around and run everywhere, and he, 
he loves it. He mm. becomes extremely happy after the shower. Mm. Uh, and something else maybe I didn't do right, uh, but I can show you, mm -hmm. is at this stage, mm -hmm. this is the time where, uh, let me wait this, I can uh, deal with his ears. No, okay. Come on, come on, no, don't go. Okay. <laughs> uh, now you see this one. Come, Melo, 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 come on, come on. So now this is the time I can deal with his ears. So now this is what I like to do at this point. I just open up the ears and I check it this way to see if there is dirt anywhere. So this I will just call it light because I can't put alcohol, it's just wet. Mm -hmm. Come on Milo. So, <laughs> so yes, yes. You, 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 go, you go through this <laughs> with, with the dogs, you just need to adapt yourself. So, you, so this one has a bit of that, you know, you just go. And the good thing with when you're wiping the ears mm -hmm. is that uh, you can really go deep. Many people don't, uh, don't know that because they're afraid. Mm -hmm. They're afraid that uh, maybe you'll hurt your dog, but everything. But with your finger, mm -hmm. you can't actually really hurt it unless really you go like a, <laughs> like a monster. But let's do this considerably. So there. Okay. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. So first I wipe the peripherals mm -hmm. and then I like going a bit deeper to remove like all the all the dirt. Did you have to get somebody to train you how to do these things? Yeah, this one is again the trainer who trained us for Keanu mm -hmm. is the one who uh, who taught us how to to really clean properly the ears. And at first we were very afraid of putting our fingers in there and everything. Mm -hmm. But when you do it properly, mm -hmm. it's okay. Your dog doesn't feel pain, mm -hmm. and it's actually it actually relaxes them. Some of them because mm -hmm. they have a lot of dirt, specifically, mm -hmm. especially people who don't do this often. So as we do it like every week or mm -hmm. two weeks, mm -hmm. so our, their ears are relatively clean, mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. Now also mm -hmm. the products in the market for mm -hmm. ear cleaning solutions. Mm -hmm. So what you normally do is uh, pour the solution and with a, and then you put a cotton swab to absorb while you're rolling it. Ah. So this is it if you don't it's just a home care mm -hmm. thing if you don't have those things. And but they are ear cleaning mm -hmm. solutions safe for dogs. Somebody might bring you a dog and they haven't been cleaned for for a very long time, yeah. That's oh. when they have like wax and they have that time you need to put alcohol here mm -hmm. but not so much it can drip but mm -hmm. just enough for it to be embedded in alcohol and then now you go in and you remove it slowly by slowly. You know, people when I tell you having a dog and taking care of a dog is like uh, having a baby, this is what I mean. Like when it comes to the hygiene of that dog, yes, even the ears are clean, <laughs> yes, you have to keep, you consider the health of the teeth. So when you're thinking about getting that dog, owning that dog, know what you're into, getting into, please take care of your dogs, probably because these are man's best friend. Mm? It's your companion, so take care of your dogs. So after it's a bit moist, you put the doggy deodorant mm -hmm. just for it to smell well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And also, like it says, it's a deodorant, so it actually keeps the dog uh, fresh mm -hmm. for a longer period. It can yeah. even go a month sometimes and, just some deodorant. And it's made of mint and what, which help in dandruff, mm -hmm. even in the human skull. Mm -hmm. It helps with dandruff. My love. It, it also has some oils. Melo, come. Yeah, it has oils good for their skin mm -hmm. and anti-dandruff mm -hmm. and not to dry them. So it's not like it's just a... It's yeah. something also there. This though should be when the dog is dry. Mm -hmm. Normally at this point you blow dry, mm -hmm. then you can you put the deodorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just for now we are showing you. Then there's this grooming comb. Mm -hmm. You comb towards against the hair to remove the the excessive yeah. hair. Yeah. You can see. Against the hair. If the hair flows like this, you comb against. To remove matting also for people who don't come much, the hair sometimes mats. And also it's good for detangling. <laughs> this is a very good detangling. Can I use it to detangle my hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, but uh, <laughs> depending on your detangling hair. My hair <laughs> detangling my hair is a headache. Mm. 
So you see for dogs who uh, shed a lot, this is what you, you are going to expect. A lot of uh, hair on your comb. And usually, uh, like uh, Penny said, we do this when they are fully, fully uh, dry. Mm -hmm. Now we are doing this now. It's also good because it's, it's easier to, for de to de detangle their hair, mm -hmm. but uh, it's still better when they are, when they are very dry. And the tail too. You see when this guy dries, he's mm -hmm. going to be extremely fluffy and perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. These are just types of combs. There are so many, some we don't even have here uh -huh. for combing. They are de-shedding and mm. this side de-sheds, this side it's just for making it smooth on uh, the after de-shedding. So well, when you see very puffy dogs, very nice looking, like the Zoe type and everything, mm -hmm. they have to have things like this. <laughs> this is what now does the magic. Mm -hmm. uh, so this usually, this is the last thing you use usually. You use this side, also again is the hair. Mm -hmm. And then when you're fully satisfied with your job, now you brush with this side. Mm. People also, when hair is overgrown, mm -hmm. people trim it with scissors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for now we'll just clip some nails. And you fire. clip, yeah, clip and fire. Uh, so you can just go back there. Yeah, okay, for the clipping. Come, come here. Let me bring come. Tree. There he is. Come. You know what's happening. Uh, so now he doesn't like your fingers. The, the clipping. Mm -hmm. The clipping is the most sensitive. Like dogs, some dogs even can bite you if you try to clip them. Mm -hmm. But there is a technique mm -hmm. you can do. First of all, you need to distract them. You see, he already knows. He has already seen this. He's not happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's really not happy, and he's very afraid. Mm. So, but him. He's too good. He's still a good one. Some of these others, mm -hmm. they are very <laughs> against such things. So to make sure you don't, uh, first of all, you don't uh, harm your dog. Mm -hmm. You look where the the nail, the nerves. I think they're called cuticles. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the term. But you look where that thing is mm -hmm. to see if you can. Uh, if you're not going to hurt him basically because mm -hmm. there's always a place where if you go too deep, mm -hmm. now they can even bleed. And I'm actually seeing here, because you see he was digging, mm -hmm. you can see nails like this, they have already been trimmed automatically. Oh. So you don't even need to do anything, but this guy, he, he digs. Mm -hmm. So you just look for nails, like for example, this one. Mm -hmm. So this is the technique now. <laughs> so when you're doing it, you give them treats. But him, mm -hmm. uh, he knows what's coming, so he's a bit, even, even treats are a bit, uh, a bit hard for him. So you just take, a bit, I don't like clipping too hard. I think that's, that's it. And then you just check here. This is good. He, he, this guy really digs a lot, so it's not even, you don't even need to do it so much. But it makes them uncomfortable. That's why you see he's even licking me, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, something else also when you're clipping, mm -hmm. some people forget uh, the side nail, this one here. Mm -hmm. Milo, good boy. So this side nail. And because uh, it's oh, a, they, yeah. they always have a side nail like this one. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to clip it because mm -hmm. if it overgrows, it actually curves in mm -hmm. and enters the, the pore here in, inside and it can actually cause infections. Mm -hmm. This one is not, if you look at this guy's nail, because we do it often, mm -hmm. he doesn't have like bad nails. Mm -hmm. Some dog's nails actually come out like this and that's the time you really see you need to clip them so much. Mm -hmm. But this guy, this is actually, okay. if you see this, mm -hmm. this on your dog, you mm -hmm. don't actually need to clip. Mm -hmm. So when when they have a place where they can dig and they're getting rough, then mm -hmm. the the nails automatically takes care of themselves. Is yeah. That what you're well, to if say? you have a dog which is a digger like mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. you'll notice many times mm -hmm. the nails are like trimmed. Mm -hmm. You don't even need. I have a file here, mm -hmm. but for a guy like this one, I don't even need to use this because he digs so much, especially mm -hmm. with the front things, mm -hmm. with the front uh, paws that there's the automatically. Uh, File his nails, mm -hmm. so he's a very, he's a very good one actually. But now I'm thinking like if I, if I, I live in an apartment and my dog has nowhere to dig, then taking care of the nails is a yeah. necessary. Now, now what the, the signs you see in an apartment specifically, mm -hmm. we have even the example of our neighbors here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear 
on the tiles. And that's when you hear that type of things on the tiles, it means the nails have overgrown and they're actually on the they're touching the floor. Mm -hmm. So that's the time you, you need to tell yourself, oh, I need to trim the nails. Mm -hmm. Even now, if you look at Milo, Milo, come when he's walking, mm -hmm. none of his nails touch down. Mm -hmm. So that's when you know he can even come very quietly. To you, you won't know. Mm -hmm. But if a nail has uh, overgrown, uh, if a dog has overgrown nails, mm -hmm. you'll hear. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's like apartments, mm -hmm. yeah, you really need to, you need to take care, you, you need this, this too, really, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, uh, mm -hmm. some people say, we don't know, but some people have told us, walking their dogs on tarmac automatically files them, mm -hmm. yeah. Some people, we see them with perfect, uh, their dogs have perfect nails, mm -hmm. we ask them, oh, you trim your dog's nails, they're like, no, it's just walking them on the tarmac, oh. regular walk. Oh, yeah. that's nice. No. We, we've had an awesome day, we've talked, 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 and now what would be your final parting shots to the people? Uh, are you online if we, people want to see your kennel and the design and uh, all this because it's beautiful. I'm very sure after, after this episode, somebody will come ask me, Linda, where are these people? So how do people find you, your parting shot and all that? So first of all, we are extremely social people. We have uh, an Instagram, which is at uh, Green Garden Kennels. And we also have a Facebook, which is also at Green Garden Kennels. So you can find us there. And we actually offer grooming services and boarding services right now. In the future, once we expand, we'll now even go to training. But right now, I can't tell people I'm going to train your dog, especially that me, myself, I'm not a fully trainer. We are trying to partnership with uh, a good, uh, maybe training company or something, so that we could be uh, able to now and on the same time we offer grooming and boarding we also have a place uh, for training yes um, yeah get yourself a dog they're very good company mm -hmm. and um, for large breeds mm -hmm. Uh, what we've learned, um, it's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, you feed um, high quality dry food mm -hmm. and uh, raw food. Mm -hmm. it, it really, raw food uh, helps them grow bigger mm -hmm. and it's healthier for them. Mm -hmm. But it always depends on the hygiene because if you are feeding raw food, you have to be very hygienic because of salmonella mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. It can give you, you just have to be nini. And watch out for us. Mm -hmm. Um, next year or coming soon we might have puppies <laughs> we have we take good care of our dogs as you've seen we'd want them to get go to really good homes yeah okay I hope I get to visit you and you're having puppies me I love puppies I love puppies <laughs> anyway people it's been awesome of these guys are just lovely and their kennel is just mwah, mm? we keep learning every day and I'm learning and today it was not even just about uh, at the breeders and puppies it was about first time dog owners how did they get here I, I understand their feeling getting at going visiting to a dog and they go home with a puppy because every time I visit a place and I see puppies and I go home I leave a piece of my heart at that kennel so it's been wonderful it's been awesome i hope you're subscribing keep hitting that notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video it's your girl kama kawaida linda kenyita and this is dog tv kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers so as a first time dog owner one thing that really helped us is watching dog um dog videos knowing about the breeds how to take care and all that information is found here in dog tv the best documentary t uh, channel in kenya be sure to like comment and subscribe and share this video so yeah we are so happy we uh, met you guys uh, in dr buffett and you're so happy you actually came to visit us it's actually an honor we were so we we're a bit stressed i'm telling you <laughs> we have celebrities visiting us and everything <laughs> so yeah thank you so much uh, by the way your videos are excellent i'm always watching dog tv to learn more mm -hmm. and it has been a really inspiring thing even our some improvements we've gotten here and they actually we got them from dog tv mm -hmm. so yes uh, like uh, please like and subscribe to this channel this is really it's uh, it has it has been a really great time and we are really happy about all this. Oh. <laughs>